Welcome to News Mongolia, where we bring you the latest stories and updates from across the nation and beyond. I'm Batsir Namshar. On the News Mongolia today, British Foreign Secretary David Cameron's Mongolia visit produces concrete results with a joint cooperation roadmap. A nearly zero energy building constructed as part of the Switch of Air Pollution 2 project was unveiled. Mongolia and Austria to cooperate in energy, health and public transportation sectors. For the news, stay tuned. British Foreign Secretary David Cameron paid an official visit to Mongolia on April 25th and 26th at the invitation of Foreign Minister of Mongolia, Batsitsik Batmu. This visit was a welcome opportunity to reaffirm the partnership between Mongolia and the United Kingdom and to further strengthen cooperation between the two countries. Now let's take a look at the visit's highlights. Mongolia and the United Kingdom's diplomatic relations date back to January 23rd of 1963, marking 60 years in 2023. Today, the British-Mongolian partnership is based on shared democratic values and extends across a wide range of sectors including trade and investment, peacekeeping, protecting the planet and biodiversity, and cultural cooperation. During the two-day visit, Foreign Secretary Cameron and Minister Batsuk discussed bilateral issues. The program included a cultural performance of Mongolian music and dance and a visit to a secondary school implementing UK education provider Pearson's English language curriculum. During his official visit, Foreign Secretary Cameron paid courtesy calls to President of Mongolia Horsa Hochna and Prime Minister Ayurton. During official talks, the two sides exchanged views on strengthening bilateral relations and reaffirmed their agreement to broaden cooperation in areas such as trade and economy, culture, education, tourism, digital governance and geology. They also agreed to launch a new initiative to support the English language training for Mongolian teachers. They discussed bilateral collaboration to advance the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and each nation's contributions to address climate change through national initiatives such as Mongolia's One Billion Trees campaign. The two foreign ministers signed a joint cooperation roadmap toward a comprehensive partnership, which further strengthens the third neighbor partnership. The document includes commitments on trade, cultural ties, the environment, education, science and technology, human rights, health and peacekeeping. The two countries also signed a Memorandum of Understanding on Critical Minerals, which provides a framework for a partnership for promoting trade and investment in critical minerals, sharing expertise for mapping and surveying of resources, upholding environmental, social and governance standards, and promoting transparency initiatives. A nearly zero energy building constructed as part of the Switch Off Air Pollution 2 project was unveiled on April 13. This demo house is designed based on the core principles of low energy consumption and self sufficiency through renewable energy sources to maintain balance throughout the year. <laughs> In Ulaanbaatar, out of 412,000 households, about 48.6% or 200,000 households reside in the Gir district neighborhoods. The heating problem is a critical issue for these residents. Various projects are underway to combat air pollution, one of which is the Switch Off Air Pollution 2 project. This project is developing and testing solutions to address this issue and integrating them into citizens' daily lives. The Demo House is part of the Switch Off Air Pollution 2 project and is funded by the European Union Switch Asia program. So meaning that it's an energy efficiency house, so there is less need uh, for the consumption for eating the house and then also it can be a little bit more independent uh, than the heating collective network because can be used uh, heat pump and solar panel with storage system. And um, so the also advantages of this house is that you have different blueprints uh, regarding the size, regarding the materials, and it was also uh, designed uh, with the comments and feedback uh, from the household on the Garia district. 
uh, to fit also with their uh, needs and way of life. Um, and so um, to build this, uh, it takes two years. So designing with this uh, criteria and comment and feedback uh, and uh, also after to build it, uh, of course. The apartment size is 6 by 6 meters and is very well insulated and sealed. The building's energy class is A, or high efficiency, and the heating system has a 5 to 15 kilowatt air water heat pump and a 5.6 kilowatt solar generator. There are three types of storage systems, battery storage, water storage, and storage electric heater. The School of Civil Engineering and Architecture of the Mongolian University of Science and Technology participated in the construction of the apartment. Our primary concern lies in heating. Opting for electric heating over coal and coal briquettes comes at a high cost. Therefore, as part of the Switch Off Air Pollution 2 project, we are primarily focused on minimizing heat loss in both old and new constructions. The demo house we are showcasing today epitomizes a nearly zero energy building. What sets this demo house apart is its remarkable 60% reduction in energy consumption compared to standard buildings. This energy saving model can be applied not only to our building but to all buildings. The building doesn't rely on a specialized technology, rather proper insulation is key. We employ two distinct systems to achieve energy efficiency. One such system is an air-to-water heat pump, which consumes 2.5 times less electricity than a traditional electric heater, whether it's during the heating season or throughout the year, not just in cold weather. The proposed solution under the Heating Solution Project centers around the design proposal, which will be available free of charge. Additionally, you are welcome to visit our building to receive general information. The switch of air pollution to project is scheduled to run for four years, concluding in 2026. Throughout this duration, the primary goal is to enhance the self-sufficiency of private residences concerning energy consumption, reducing reliance on centralized systems as much as feasible. The project aligns with the guidelines for nearly zero energy buildings set forth by the European Union. Our company contributed to the Stemo house by introducing a device known as a heat storage heater. This device operates for six to eight hours a day, using power during this period and then remaining dormant. It releases accumulated heat while in the dormant phase. During this active phase, it gathers heat ranging from 600 to 800 degrees Celsius and gradually emits this heat for 24 to 36 hours. We collaborated in this experiment with scientists from the Mongolian University of Science and Technology to explore the feasibility of installing solar systems in remote areas such as farms and mines, where herders lack a central energy system. The main aim was to harness solar energy during the day, store it and utilize it to keep houses warm during other times. The experiment proved successful, demonstrating the device's capability to withstand extremely cold temperatures ranging from minus 35 to minus 40 degrees Celsius during harsh winter conditions. Everyone is invited to visit the demo house, where they can explore and learn about the process of constructing energy-efficient homes and apartments. Visitors can also receive valuable advice during their visit. The demo house is situated in the School of Business Administration and Humanities at the Mongolian University of Science and Technology. It will be open to the public every Wednesday from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. until June 15, 2024. Experts on energy solutions will be present to provide guidance and information to interested citizens. Now let's take a look at Mongolia's current affairs.
the governor of the capital city and mayor of Ulaanbaatar, Nimbatar Hishke, held a meeting with the ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary of the Republic of Austria to Mongolia, Andreas Rikian, to discuss cooperation between the two nations. The mayor of Ulaanbaatar highlighted the upcoming 60th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Mongolia and Austria, emphasizing the successful implementation of various projects under this partnership. He addressed the pressing issue of traffic congestion in Ulaanbaatar and announced the consultation tender for the metro project along a weighted solution. Additionally, the UP cable car project has been started. Ambassador Rikun expressed Austria's willingness to collaborate on health, infrastructure, and public transportation in Mongolia. Both parties discussed cooperation regarding introducing eco-friendly technology to Mongolia and exchanging best practices in hydroelectricity, energy efficiency, waste management, as well as recycling. You're watching News Mongolia. Now let's take a look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Now let's take a look at international news from our partner agencies. The top UN court rejected on Tuesday a request by Nicaragua to order Germany to halt military and other aid to Israel and renew funding to the UN aid agency in Gaza. The International Court of Justice said that legal conditions for making such an order weren't met and ruled against the request in a 15 to 1 vote. However, the 16-judge panel declined to throw out the case altogether. The court will still hear arguments from both sides on the merits of Nicaragua's case, which alleges that Germany failed to prevent genocide in Gaza. That will likely take months. The reading of the decision lasted less than 20 minutes. The German Foreign Office wrote on X after the ruling that no one is about the law. This guides our actions. We welcome today's decision by the International Court of Justice. Germany argued at hearings in the case that it has barely exported any weapons to Israel since the offensive against Gaza started following the deadly incursion into southern Israel by Hamas militants on October 7. The court noted that Germany has granted only four export licenses to Israel for weapons of war since the start of the conflict, two for training ammunition and one for test purposes, as well as one consignment of 3,000 portable anti-tank weapons. Nicaragua, a long-standing ally of the Palestinians, alleges that Germany is enabling genocide by sending arms and other support to Israel. Tuesday's ruling by the International Court of Justice is only about preliminary orders in the case that will likely take years to resolve. Germany rejects the allegations. Israel, which isn't a party to the case between Nicaragua and Germany, strongly denies that its assault on Gaza amounts to acts of genocide and insists that it's acting in self-defense. Nicaragua's case is the latest legal bid by a country with historic ties to the Palestinian people to stop Israel's offensive. Late last year, South Africa accused Israel of genocide at the court. The cases come as Israel's allies face growing calls to stop supplying it with weapons and as some, including Germany, have grown more critical of the war. On Monday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that Israel must still do more to increase the flow of humanitarian aid into the besieged Gaza Strip. The head of Germany's legal team, Tanya von Usler Gleichen, said that Nicaragua's claims have no basis in fact or law. Israel strongly denies that its assault on Gaza amounts to genocidal acts, saying it's acting in self-defense after Hamas-led militants stormed into southern Israel on October 7, killing around 1,200 people. Israeli legal advisor Tal Becker told judges at the court earlier this year in the case brought by South Africa that Israel is fighting a war it didn't start and didn't want. 
Israel blames the high civilian death toll on Hamas because the militants fight in dense residential areas. The military says it has killed more than 12,000 militants without providing evidence. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for staying with us. We'll see you on Thursday with more news and updates. Goodbye.